would vote for Joe Biden over Donald Trump in a heartbeat. What do you do? Go with Trump with a mouthful of vomit. But I can't vote for Joe Biden. Kim Brand and Stacey Van Groningen are both voting for Nikki Haley on Tuesday and dreading what likely comes next. At a weekend rally in North Carolina, they watched Haley together. What a crowd! But parted ways at the notion of a rematch between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Should she not win the nomination, uh, what do you do in November? Cry. Brand, a retired banker, said she'll back Biden. Van Groningen, a retired consultant, said she'll vote for Trump again. First time I did, you know, with joy, Second time I did with my nose plug, but I'll do it again with my nose plug. I just can't believe, though, that that's what we have to choose from. We have to strengthen. In the waning days of the primary, conversations with Haley voters offer important lessons, perhaps less so for her own candidacy than for Trump, Biden, or even a third party candidate. In November, if she's not on the ballot at all, I'm voting for Biden because I don't want Donald Trump to be anywhere near my country. I've been intrigued for a while now at the whole notion of a, of a legitimate third party. If you don't think you need that 30 or 40 percent of us, you are showing exactly why you're going to lose a general election. North Carolina, one of 15 states holding Republican contest Tuesday, is emerging as an early general election battleground. The fast-growing suburbs and college-educated voters are in the sights of both parties as the next chapter of the campaign takes shape. We know that the state is 50-50. Anderson Clayton is chair of the North Carolina Democratic Party. It's been 16 years since Barack Obama won here, the last Democrat to do so. Trump's margin of victory has narrowed, a little more than one point in 2020, down from more than three points in 2016. My job, in my opinion, right, is to go chase every Democrat that from 2008 did not vote afterwards, did not see themselves represented in this party afterwards. Billy Ward is vice chairman of the Wake County Republican Party in Raleigh. He draws a different lesson in the booming population growth. We see a lot of people that are moving in because even though they're Democrats, they're frustrated with the way the Democrats have been running their former states, their former cities, and in many ways the country. The big question is whether the fall election becomes a stark choice with Trump or a referendum on Biden, the economy and more. I think people are ready to go back to what we had four years ago. Sarah Reedy Jones misses Trump's policies and said she can tolerate all that comes with it. Suburban women are afraid they can't pay the bills. They're having to go back to work. You know, at the end of the day, they're worried about personal safety and they're worried about providing for their families. Go out and vote on Tuesday. As Haley weighs whether Super Tuesday will be her last stand, supporters like Brand and Von Groningen brace for a long road to November. So will you try and work on each other over the next eight months or you're... <laughs> no, we value independent things. So of all the states voting tomorrow, North Carolina stands out for what it could mean for the fall. And those Nikki Haley voters are squarely in the middle. Now, there's no doubt, as you heard there, some supporters are anti-Trump, but many, many we spoke to also anti-Biden. But Aaron, the outcome of this primary could expose Trump's vulnerabilities, particularly among college-educated voters in those fast-growing suburbs, where Biden also has considerable ground to make up if he wants to turn it into a winning battleground and earn those 16 electoral votes. Aaron. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. Fascinating. Everyone could learn from those uh, two women's friendship, uh, valuing independent thinking and being able to be friends, uh, such close friends with someone voting the other way. Out front now, Kristen Soltis-Anderson, Republican strategist and pollster, along with Karen Finney, the former senior spokesperson for Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. Uh, all right, so Kristen, you just heard those Super Tuesday voters telling Jeff that they're intrigued by the idea of a legitimate third party, is how they put it. And obviously, no labels. That group has said they'd be open to Nikki Haley leading that ticket. She's publicly rejected it. But she's got a lot of money. I mean, she just raised $12 million in February. So what do you think it would actually do to the race? If, and I understand it's an if she's currently rejecting, but if she pursued an independent run, what would it do, Kristen? If Nikki Haley pursued an independent run, it would really make things challenging for Donald Trump to put together the coalition he would need to win in November. You do not want to go into a general election in these polarized times with a divided party. Now, I think it is highly unlikely that Nikki Haley would ever yeah. do this. She has a long career in politics. I think she has her sights set on a future Republican nomination. Running as an independent would really 
uh, just sink that particular boat for the long term. But I think if somebody was compelling as an independent, we do see a real dissatisfaction in both major party presumptive nominees this time around. Right. And of course, as you point out, you know, when you look at the generational divide and she talks about this new generation, I mean, she is young. She's got a lot ahead of her if she does want to pursue more in in Republican politics, obviously. Um, But Karen, for those sitting at home, they (laughs) suddenly say, wait a minute. What if there was a ballot choice and it's Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Nikki Haley and RFK Jr.? Mm -hmm. What the heck happens? (laughs) Donald Trump likely becomes our next president. Uh, thankfully, you know, no, just one thing about no labels. They've said they're interested in her. It's my understanding she's not interested in them. And that's right. smart because that is a slush fund for the two people, the donors who founded it. They've even said their goal is not to win. It's to offer a choice. And I would mm-hmm. just remind people, all those women who were bawling when Donald Trump won in 2016, Those folks who voted for Jill Stein and Gary Johnson, how did you feel when you found out that Donald Trump won? Uh, So I I think that's a history we don't want to see repeat itself. Um, But I think we, you know, look, as Democrats, we are taking it very seriously, the potential challenge. I just want to, the one the other thing I would say about Nikki Haley, though, she is a smart politician. And I think yep. she probably knows her future is in the Republican Party, not as an independent. And if she was seen as a spoiler, that could be a problem. Yeah. I think she should go out and campaign for other candidates down ballot. Oh, so, Kristen, the, the context here, of course, is uh, here's another poll. I had mentioned the New York Times at the beginning of the show. So let me give you the AP one now. 80 percent of independent voters are not confident in Biden's mental capabilities. say the same about Trump. I mean, it is overwhelming uh, in terms of people feeling this way about Biden much more than they do about Trump. And yet, listen to Trump this weekend. And Putin, you know, has so little respect for Obama that he's starting to throw around the nuclear war theory. You heard that, nuclear. The Biden border will, well, you know this, right? The Biden border bill, did you just see Maduro, Venezuela, it's uh, unbelievable. We are a nation that just recently heard that Saudi Arabia and Russia will will be reducing. And, you know, people pull together these clips, Kristen, we've all seen them on Twitter, you know, to to, they're trying to make the point that, oh, look at Trump. He stumbles. He confuses Pelosi uh, and Haley and he confuses Biden uh, and Obama. But why isn't that resonating with voters in the same way that it is with Biden on age? Well, this has been part of Nikki Haley's message for the last couple of weeks now, is that it is unfathomable that as a country, this is the choice that we're going to be facing. I think the reason it's hit Biden a little bit harder thus far is that he has stayed more off the radar. Most of what Americans hear about him are these gaffes, where for Donald Trump, there's a lot of well, he's just weird. Well, he just says stuff kind of priced into how people already think about him. With that Mm. said, I do think that clips like the one you just showed, if that begins to at least eliminate some of the advantage Trump has over Biden on the who is older and more with it question, that could be a problem if enough of them accumulate as we get closer to November. And Karen, uh, Evan Osnos just got a rare interview with the president uh, when, when you're talking about him appearing more. Um, and, and Evan said he did not see much of a difference in the president physically. And he writes in his article for The New Yorker that he wrote about this, quote, his voice is thin and clotted and his gestures have slowed. But in our conversation, his mind seemed unchanged. He never bungled a name or a date. Mm-hmm. Now, that's an honest assessment, right? I mean, no one wants to hear their yeah. voice being clotted and thin. But <laughs> mind seems unchanged, never bungling a name or a date. Is that bar high enough for voters? Well, look, I think it's going to play itself out over the coming months. I mean, Americans are going to have to see that for themselves. But I will say, as someone who has had uh, worked for people, you know, an Evan Osno's uh, profile is no joke. I mean, that's a, those are tough, long interviews. Uh, so that's a, for those of us who know that, that's a positive sign. But again, I think it's going to be more about the president getting out there and talking to people for folks to see for themselves. I will also say, though, the amount of coverage of Joe Biden and his age has far outmatched what we've seen about Trump. So I agree. We may see that even out. 